introception is a sense within all of our bodies. So when we talk about senses, sometimes we talk about like sight and smell and touch and taste and sound and interoception is a sense just like those. The only difference is um, like our sense of sight is pulling in information from outside of our bodies. So we have our eyeballs as the receptors pulling in information about all that we see outside of our bodies. And interoception works in a similar way where it ha has receptors located throughout your body and these receptors are pulling in information from the inside of your body. So like you have receptors for interoception in your heart, your lungs, your stomach, your bladder, your skin, like the lining of your mouth, the, 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 the eye, your eyeballs. And so these receptors are pulling in information about how all of these different body parts are feeling. So if you think about the receptors like in your stomach, pulling in information about how your stomach is feeling. So uh, does it feel empty? Does it feel full? Um, does it feel like, um, like gassy? Does it feel tingly? Like that little butterfly sensation that people talk about. And so those um, introception receptors pulling in information about how all of your different body parts are feeling. And those, um, th that information gets sent to your brain and your brain uses that information as clues to your emotions. So if your receptors in your stomach are saying you have like an empty feeling in your stomach, your brain can use that as a clue telling you, oh, you're hungry. Or maybe the receptors in your bladder are telling you that your bladder feels full and your brain can use that as a clue that you need to go, um, that you need to urinate. Or maybe the receptors in your body are picking up information that maybe your heart is beating fast and your muscles are tight and your brain can use that as a clue that you are feeling anxious. Um, so introception is, um, is a sense to help us to feel our bodies and being able to feel our bodies and understand our bodies is what in what helps us know what emotion we're experiencing. Um, and if we clearly know what emotion we're experiencing, then, then we can take that next step of regulation. We know what we need to do to take care of our body's needs. So if I know I'm hungry, then I know I need to eat to regulate my body. Or if I know that I'm feeling anxious, then I know that I should do something like I love to walk. So I would go for a walk to help me regulate my body's needs. Yeah, so thank you so much. That was a beautiful explanation. And I think it's important for parents to also know that we cannot segregate as in, you know, they shouldn't feel that we can work as in, it all works together, you know, in our body. So they shouldn't feel okay. So let me work on, you know, it's like, okay, this is for vestibular, this is for proprioceptive, this is for interoception. It's like we work I don't know if I'm able to express what I'm trying to tell you because, you know, it shouldn't be that you work on interoception and everything else is done. It's not that way, you know, like. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we know that interoception works with all of our other senses to help us to get through our daily lives. So interoception is not something completely separate. Uh, we don't know enough research yet about how exactly interoception works with all of our other senses, but we do know that it's not some separate thing, um, like you mentioned, that we need to consider all of our senses. Yeah, because, you know, sometimes parents come to me and they're like, okay, that's done. I know this. Tell me something about only interest, interoception. What do I do? Mm -hmm. My child is this old. What do we do? What happens at a child? You know, what are the things that the child can do at this age? That much of detailed uh, working only on one particular sense, do you think it's a good idea or do you think we would work on everything holistically on all senses together? Uh, I, yeah, I think we definitely need to be holistic. Um, we can be like targeted towards one sense, you know, and like, but you still want to consider all the factors. Like even, for example, like if your child is sensitive to noise, so that's an, that's a, that's your sense of sound or auditory and noise 
can, in that situation for your child, makes their body feel overwhelmed. So there is a connection between the auditory system and interoception. So you can't really work on interoception without addressing and maybe giving some strategies for your child to help them feel safe around noises in their environment. So we need to be constantly considering um, the big picture and being very holistic. Yeah, thank you so much. It's like one sense will always affect the other and the other would affect. So it's like a two-way bi-directional kind of a process. So yeah. for parents who just want to know generally what can they do, you know, like what can they do about interoception? As we spoke, it's not that you can work separately on it, but day to day, what is it that they can do to bring about that awareness? Yeah, We cannot... I'm sorry, but we cannot talk about, you know, do this, this, this. They can refer mm -hmm. to your books. They can refer mm -hmm. to your chan uh, your website. I, yes, I know right. that you have a lot of courses related to interoception. So those all would be there and they, they we would put the links below. But generally, if we generally want to start, where do they start? So the number one thing I recommend um, for caregivers is just start talking the interoception talk. So what we mean by that is start just talking out loud about how your own body is feeling. So maybe you're like holding a warm cup of tea. Talk about how your hands are feeling when you're holding that warm cup of tea. Like, oh, this makes my hands feel, you know, whatever it is, warm or tingly, whatever word is meaningful to you. So talking about how your body is feeling around your child is just providing a great model, it's providing language to your child. It's showing them that their body feel feelings are really important because you're talking about them. So they must be important. Right. Um, and then slowly you can start shifting it over to inviting your child to notice the way their body part feels too. So maybe they join you in holding the warm cup of tea and they can notice how their hands are feeling uh, while they're doing that. And they can label that out loud if they, if, if they're a talker, um, or maybe you're running around playing with them and talking about how your heart is feeling when you're running around and then inviting them to notice how their heart is feeling as well. So just talking that interoception talk is the easiest thing that you can do as a parent, because it doesn't require you doing anything additional to your daily routine. It's just really kind of shifting your, the way you're thinking. Um, and just talking out loud during what you're already doing in daily life. And that has a side benefit when you start talking about the way your body feels, it has a side benefit. Getting back to what we were talking about earlier, it has a side benefit of improving the caregiver's interoceptive awareness because you have to be noticing your body sensations to be able to label and talk out loud about them. So it really is just a beautiful, very easy thing to do that has so many important benefits to it. Yeah. And you know, what if parents ask questions like, and I'm sure they want to know, so I'm just voicing out what everybody would ask. How much time does it take, you know, to work and to get there as an, of course, it's not like you have to reach there on the top, but how much time does it take to get some kind of language and awareness to develop? Yeah, uh, I wish I knew the answer to that. <laughs> um, so some of our uh, learners, they are catching on like really quick and they're making really quick gains and other people take a long time. Um, it's not related to age or cognitive ability or language ability. It, it, we really can't figure out why some people, you know, ca they make faster um, improvements than, than other people. Um, we've seen really amazing gains in as short as seven weeks with some of the OT, the occupational therapy, like that's a little bit more structured um, approaches that we're using. But then some of my clients take a few years. And, and like we said, I think it's important to go back. This is a lifelong skill. Like it's not something you're going to say, oh, you know, you reach the, you reach the uh, highest level of interoceptive awareness. All of us, um, we fluctuate every day and our interoceptive awareness changes every day. And sometimes we have days where we're more attuned to how our body is feeling and other days we're so busy or we're distracted or we're overwhelmed. We didn't sleep well, whatever it is. And we're not attuned to the way our bodies are feeling. So it's a constant, um, it's a constant process. Does it ever happen that it will never develop in some kids, no matter how much you teach? 
we haven't had that experience yet. Um, that in, interception, and, and I think it's important to show that the or you know point out that the research also clearly indicates that interceptive awareness can be improved in all of us, um, and we haven't found anyone. Um, that we're doing this work with yet where they're not making some gains. And we're even doing this work, I'm sure, I don't know, a big question that a lot of us have, a lot of caregivers have is like if their child has um, maybe some cognitive delays or um, they don't speak to communicate, um, can, can they do interception work with them? And the answer is absolutely yes. Uh, we're even seeing awesome, really, really cool gains in uh, many different learners. So um, when it comes to supporting learners that don't speak to communicate, um, really trying to embed that interception language in their communication system is really important. Um, and if your child's not at a place yet where they have some alternative form of communication, that's okay. Still talking out loud about the way your body feels is still putting that language out there. So many of our kids are little sponges. They're taking in everything. We might not realize they are, but they are. And then as adults, we know a lot of autistic adults are reflecting back on their childhood and saying how much they really were taking in. So um, there's, there's always work that we can be doing. Yeah. And so for some of them who are listening, which are the diagnoses of kids or who are the kind of, I mean, apart from autism, who have kids who have a diagnosis, who are the others who would need this kind of help? You said, of course, everybody, but who are the ones who would need it more and where it may be needed to develop? And it may be just seen as a behavioral issue, which in fact, may be something, there could be something deeper there. Yeah. Um, well, like you said, interoception is an everyone thing. And in the US, we're trying to embed intercept, the interoception curriculum in schools so that every kid um, gets to enhance their inter and understand their interoception experience. Um, but we are also doing this as occupational therapists with kids that have a variety of diagnoses. So uh, sensory processing disorder, anxiety disorders, eating disorders, trauma history is a really big area um, of interoception research and um, strategy. Um, really basically any mental health diagnoses, the research says that um, interoception difficulties underlie every single mental health diagnosis there is. So it's a really important aspect of all of our mental health. And especially as we are in the midst of a pandemic and all of us are experiencing a, you know, varying degrees of trauma, interoception becomes a very important consideration for every single one of us. Mm. Would you be able to share some success story, some examples, so parents get to know what exactly does that interoception thing looks like, you know, what are the yeah. things that happen and what kind of improves, you know? Yeah, um, so it really depends on each child and, and you know, the, the whole goal of the interoception work. So we, we see a lot of kids that have toileting difficulties and they've tried so many different toileting approaches and interoception is the missing piece for them. Um, you know, interoception is not the only piece that is needed for successful toileting, but it's often a missing piece. So um, embedding that interoception work and helping kids to learn to understand the way their body is feeling and what that feeling is for them and their body that tells them they need to get to the bathroom that has been so successful in decreasing um, bowel and bladder leakage for a lot of my kids, uh, my, a lot of my clients. Um, we also see a lot of emotion regulation improvements. So what that means is um, for a lot of my clients, when I first meet them, like the, the parents will say, well, they've been taught like every single coping skill uh, like we've taught them take deep breaths, go for a walk, you know, ask for help with a help card. And they don't notice the need to use those strategies, like in the moment when they're getting overwhelmed. So being able to help each client to notice the way their bodies are feeling and use those clues, like discovering like, oh, when my hands get tight, that's a sign that I need to use one of my coping skills we start to see kids starting to use their, their strategies more independently and they become more successful self-regulators. 
um, they also start to begin to understand their emotions more. And for a lot of learners, we, we kind of assume that everyone understands what angry means, what sad means, what happy means. And that's not the case for a lot of people that have interception uh, interception uncertainty or difficulty, um, their emotions are very hard to understand. So they become very concretely, um, they understand like, oh, okay. So um, sad means for me when my eyes are wet and my, my, my chest feels heavy, like those are the signs for me that I know that I am sad. So they become concrete, um, emotions become more concrete for them. Uh, we also see a lot of um, improved um, healthy eating habits. So seeking out food and drinks on their own or um, eating a healthy amount of food. I have a lot of clients that just eat and eat and eat and eat and eat and they never notice that feeling of being full in their bodies. Uh, we see a lot of improved sleep because kids are noticing when they're tired and going to the bed in that ideal sleep window. Uh, I could go on and on, but I don't want to overwhelm you uh, with all the improvements that we're seeing. Would you be able to talk more about your work and if people want to reach out to you or if they want some online support, how can they find more information on what we just spoke yeah, so I have a website and it's kelly-mahler.com and we have a lot of free resources on my website. We have videos and blog and articles. So that's a great place to start if you want to learn more about interoception. And then um, we also have some paid resources on there too if you want to take it a step, a step further, uh, especially we have online courses and we have something called the interoception curriculum, which is for professionals. And that's a really systematic approach or framework for enhancing um, the interoception needs in our clients. Great. Is there something that you feel I have not asked you, which I should have asked? <laughs> I think we covered a lot. <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much. I really appreciate your time that you gave us. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. It was fun to talk with you.